When Practice Meets Feminist Standpoint Theory, Continuing the Pursuit of a Sociology for People by Neely Minemi, Queen's University of Charlotte. Hi, I'm Neely Minemi, and I'd like to tell you about a recent crisis involving an organization I greatly admire. Co-founders Tony Porter and Ted Bunch of A Call to Mend are highly regarded thought leaders in the anti-domestic violence community. Their educational program on men's awareness is proven successful on an individual, group, and community level in the U.S. and abroad. They provide consultation in the professional sports industry, the television industry, and for government and law enforcement agencies. Yet one decision in July of 2015 left their judgment severely called into question by peers, colleagues, and the battered women they serve. It's hard to imagine what two seasoned, influential humanitarian leaders could possibly have said to cause such an uproar. Well, as it turns out, feminist standpoint theory helps not only to understand what went wrong, but reveals how they, and we, can avoid similar crises in the future. Let's take a look. A Call to Men's website states the organizational belief that, quote, preventing domestic and sexual violence falls to well-meaning men men who, for the most part, don't see themselves as part of the problem, to get involved." End quote. From this homepage, visitors can easily locate their interests in three clicks or less. This is an organization with communications well in hand. Their mission statement, to create a world where all men and boys are loving and respectful and all women and girls are valued and safe, leaves nothing to argue, and their educational impact has been substantial. As the saying goes, what could possibly go wrong? In an ESPN interview on July 27, 2015, Bunch and Porter endorsed ex-Baltimore Ravens player Ray Rice for a return to football. In the interview, Tony Porter stated he knew they would, quote, catch flack for this, end quote. Several months prior, public perception of Rice hit rock bottom after extended video was released showing the knockout punch he delivered to then fiance Janae Palmer. Many events in this infamous story were fertile ground for public skepticism, most notably Rice's avoidance of jail time through pretrial intervention, the lifting of his indefinite NFL suspension, and of course, dismissal of all charges in May 2015. All this set the stage for intense backlash at the endorsement, the level of which Bunch and Porter grossly miscalculated. During the nine months these well-meaning and uniquely qualified leaders were working privately with the Rice family, this public chain of events served as the forum where peers and colleagues developed starkly different perceptions. For those most familiar with the call to men, this endorsement came out of nowhere. This lack of communication is confirmed in a letter of apology posted just three days later. We took action without consulting the community that we are so privileged to work for and with and without thoughtfully considering the impact of our endorsement. There is an impressive level of self-reflexive language throughout this letter. In closing their apology, the co-founders state, we recognize and accept that male entitlement played a role in our decision to not consult those most impacted by our stance, women, and more specifically, women of color. By the nature of their work, Bunch and Porter have communicative immersion with men much of the time. Add to that their isolated sphere with Ray Rice, and unknowingly they fell into the exact mode of thinking they teach others to avoid. An effective counterbalance to that immersion would be the work of sociologist Dorothy Smith. Through her lens of feminist standpoint theory, seasoned leaders like these can create intellectual safeguards to prevent falling down the rabbit hole again. So we find there is vulnerability in serving a cause for women from a state of communicative immersion with men. As Bunch and Porter stated in their letter, good intentions are not good enough, and I find encouragement in that to suggest the mental rigors of feminist standpoint theory. This is a framework with power to fortify them against the aura of male privilege, as well as potential for new lines of thought as speakers and educators. Nastasia and Greco describe Smith's concept of the circle of men and her goal of using feminist sociology to unearth a sociology for people. They also note her critical awareness of her own privilege in being white and middle class. For Smith, the circle of men is, quote, an order to which women contribute, yet from which they are excluded, to which women are confined, yet in which they feel strangers, end quote. This speaks directly to the male privilege Porter and Bunch confessed in their Ray Rice endorsement. However, one misguided decision does not outweigh language used throughout the Occult to Men website, which dismantles male privilege. For example, quote, Violence and discrimination against women and girls is a larger social ill requiring a social response." End quote. 
As men of influence, they are uniquely suited to the task of contributing as practitioners to a sociology for people. In discussing reflexivity, Smith wrote, quote, working as an insider means that inquiry into how things work, into the actualities of socially organized practices, makes what we are part of visible, end quote. Or, as Donald and Pomper observed, quote, personal accounts of people in marginal positions, such as the outsider within, can expose invisible forces that sustain social orders, end quote. As a female scholar, Smith sought to view the world from inside the circle of men. As a result, her writing helps men of conscience to better imagine the everyday view of women. Tony Porter has publicly said, quote, My liberation as a man is tied to your liberation as a woman, end quote. Examining the work of Smith and others would produce a refined vision for that liberation. The meeting of feminist theory with a call to men's practice would lead to tremendous progress in ending domestic violence. In 1978, Smith wrote, quote, The concerns, interests, experiences forming our culture are those of men in positions of dominance whose perspectives are built on the silence of women and of others, end quote. Though unintentionally done, it was in silencing the voices of battered women and of their esteemed colleagues that Bunch and Porter created this crisis. This endorsement revealed a chink in their mental armor that Smith offers help to repair. By enriching their knowledge base through feminist standpoint theory, leadership and staff of A Call to Men will be better able to work in the circle of men, yet remain attuned to the voices of women. Assuming leadership buy into the ideas of Dorothy Smith, my first recommendation would be a suggested internal reading list. This should be an easy sell with the type of employees drawn to a call to men. As stated before, consultation or even co-authorship with a feminist scholar, female if possible, would reap enormous benefit in new educational material. It would also chip away at any lingering mistrust from the Ray Rice endorsement, which of course is difficult to measure. Best to assume it's there and for leadership to extend themselves in this regard. One recommendation not easily done would be the re-examination of relationships with the NFL, MLB, NHL, and the NBA. If any relationship points exist where leadership needs to step outside the circle of men and stand more firmly on accountability to women, feminist standpoint theory will root them out. I do not envy leadership this task, but the recommendation stands. On a more positive note, Deep intervention therapies such as equine assisted psychotherapy, or EAP, could be the key to success in abuser rehabilitation efforts such as the work with Ray Rice. EAP has been proven with former soldiers, at-risk youth, and struggling adults. My own volunteer exposure to EAP leads me to believe that any abuser truly committed to change will be helped by it, and if not, the horses will expose that lack of commitment in short order. Because this crisis was partially born of immersion in the standpoint of men, the perfect solution is to delve intellectually into the standpoint of women. In doing so, the leaders of a call to men would be taking their self-reflexivity to the next level. There's no limit to the potential benefit for the mission of their organization and for the overall cause of ending domestic violence. Ted Bunch and Tody Porter have earned tremendous influence through years of sincere effort on behalf of women. I think we should continue to trust them, give them space, and see what they do with it next. For more information on Bunch, Porter, or the exceptional organization they founded, visit acalltomen.org. I hope you've enjoyed this digital presentation as much as I enjoyed creating it. Thanks for watching.